Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of the International Cannabis Conversation. My name is Chris Day. I'm your host for this travel around the world as we look at uh, global cannabis markets. And while we're recording this episode in the last week and a half or so of December 2021, by the time we air, uh, it will be the new year with this one. So I don't think it's too late to say Happy New Year, everybody. We're glad that you're here and listening. Uh, And we're starting the year off with a lot of news and movement, um, especially out of the European markets. And so I'm happy to have with me today um, someone who has been on with us before, uh, knows a lot about the workings, not only of the North American markets, but also Europe, uh, CEO of Materia, uh, Deepak Anand. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Chris. Yeah, it's great to see you again. So um, depending on if we're going to project into the future or not, I'll say happy holidays and happy new year. Likewise, same same there. And uh, yeah, definitely wishing um, all the viewers a very happy new year. Yeah, as we look, I, um, I see you, you have been quite busy uh, since we talked last. And I saw this press release that you all issued on December 16th, and I was remembering a dinner that I saw you at in 2019, I think it was, in Malta, and you were laying out this vision that you had for this company that was, um, as far as I was concerned, quite new, hadn't heard anything about it, Uh, and now this release comes out, you have medicinal cannabis products available in Malta and have aspirations, it sounds like, for much, much more, just as the vision. Um, Tell me, how is that going? And uh, how did it come about? Because to some folks, I think it's all in a black box and they're never quite sure how these things happen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you know, 2019 just seems uh, only a blink away. And it's uh, it's amazing how much uh, has happened, not only with Materia, but also generally on the continent, as we'll speak about, uh, and, and the world really since since 2019. Uh, with respect to Materia, you know, we, we started out with just a vision, as, as you correctly pointed out, very early on in 2019. Um, and in 2020, sort of, you know, laid the foundation. Since then, we've actually done quite a bit uh, with the business. Um, not only, as you correctly pointed out, do we have an EU GMP certified facility in Malta, for which we announced on December 16th uh, that we've sort of shipped the first products out into into the Maltese market, but we've also uh, started to ship out a lot of products into your into the rest of Europe. And so we have another asset in Germany that, for the last almost year year and a half now, has been selling medical cannabis products, uh, you know, in Germany and been selling it to pharmacies and getting it to patients. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we're quite proud of our accomplishments in a very short time, particularly as a new nascent company, uh, to be able to get off the ground running in three countries now. We, we have our, uh, you know, manufacturing facility in Malta, where we have now put products out in the market. We have our distribution facility in Germany that sells to pharmacies. And then we have a CBD e-commerce marketplace in the UK that uh, has been selling CBD products across the UK. So we're very proud of, uh, you know, of our accomplishments in, in a very short time. You know, it's it's first of all, congratulations for all of that. It is so neat to see how, you know, these multinational companies that uh, frequently people don't hear about because they're not out there pounding their chest all day. They're busy getting business done, uh, how it all gets uh, structured and, and, and put together. You know, shortly after that press release of yours, it was like uh, the Maltese government was just waiting for you to give your good news. Then they come out with theirs, um, talking about how they're expanding the legalization of uh, cannabis uh, in in Malta, really the first EU country to to move that way. Um, But I noticed within the some of the verbiage that I was reading around the law, it it sounds much more like they're using the co-op model as opposed to regular distribution um, that we might think of in pharmacies and such in other parts of the continent. Am I, am I reading that right? 
Yeah, you are, Chris. I mean, first of all, I think it's very important to highlight that Malta, unlike some other jurisdictions, you know, we saw Luxembourg make a lot of noise around what was there going to be their legalization movement. And we certainly we're seeing a lot of noise in Germany around to be legalized, you know, sort of markets. And we'll talk about that later. Uh, but I think what, what we've seen in Malta is actually not a lot of hype. You know, there wasn't a lot of stuff put out in advance that we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to uh, one day look at doing something. I think what you've seen is, uh, once again, a very proactive government uh, looking to make real change. And, and I think if you listen to, listen to the ministers and, uh, you know, a number of government officials on this file, uh, you know, they've, they've acknowledged that the, the current system is, is, is not working. Uh, you know, we can't arrest our way out of this problem. Uh, you know, the, there is a serious consequence of the war on drugs. And so we're going to take a very uh, balanced approach on the decriminalization and legalization of cannabis on the island. And, and you know, of course, that has impact impacts beyond the island itself into the rest of Europe. And so what you've seen is a very pragmatic approach by the government. Of course, a lot more needs to be done. Uh, you're right, it is the co-op model. Um, you know, they've allowed for a number of things to take place, a number of things to happen, not just legalization, not just the dropping of possession, not just the home cultivation, not just the co-op you know, co model uh, where, you know, you could go into a club and, and be able to have access to products, but also most importantly, uh, have also looked at sort of, you know, unjust prohibition and people that have had criminal records, uh, you know, uh, be, being able to apply for pardons. And so I think it's a very comprehensive bill. I think what Malta has done has learned from the different geographies and what's worked and what's not worked and in balance that approach. Uh, sure, you know, we don't have full-blown legalization in that, you know, companies can't cultivate you know, recreational cannabis and start to sell it through dispensaries or um, or cannabis retail stores on the non-medical side. Uh, but that's to come. And, and so I think it's, you know, it's laying the foundation, the pillars uh, to start uh, a project, but uh, certainly, uh, you know, a very pragmatic approach by the government and certainly got all the right balances of ESG and, uh, and, and, and you know, making sure criminal prohibitions are, are removed, making sure people aren't being arrested for possession. So they looked at Portugal, they looked at Canada, they looked at the US and actually, you know, um, evolved with the model that is very proactive and has a lot to a lot of good to build off. Yeah, this shift in Malta, I think, is really indicative of you know the overarching trends that we're seeing in Europe. I know there's a lot of other markets that are contemplating, as you mentioned, uh, expanded legalization. I am curious though whether it's going to be Luxembourg or Germany or you know someone else that sort of makes that next move. Because just like we saw again in you know Latin America with Mexico, there's a there's a ton of talk and then they sort of stall out. So what do you think you know as we move into 22 is going to be reality versus just promises? Yeah, look, I mean, Luxembourg has already moved out the gates, uh, even though it's a it's a significantly watered down version of of where. Um, they were supposed to be versus where they are today. Nonetheless, it, it it's still it's still progress and, and they're moving forward. I think Germany is going to be the big one to watch. I think that, of course, Germany is the powerhouse in, in Europe. Uh, Europe has the eyes on Germany and, and, you know, a lot of countries that are kind of, you know, sitting on sidelines, theater tottering, significant countries like Italy and France, uh, watching very closely what Germany is going to do. I think as you peel the layers of the onion back, you know, there's many things that need to happen. You know, I think it's easy for a country like Malta to look at mini legalization and decriminalization uh, within its own borders and, and certainly start to, you know, push that, that agenda and narrative. But I think that, you know, Germany has got a number of things to, to, to look out for, not just the international implication, which is the implication on UN treaties uh, in Canada. We had to deal with that very early on around uh, what we would do, what our options were. Uh, but, you know, Germany has the an additional uh, challenge, which is the European challenge. You know, there's a number of European regulations that need to be looked at and amended, whether it be the Schengen area and cross-border movement, or whether it be specific articles within the way that the European Union has been has been structured and set up. And so there's a number of those sort of highlights level political and policy level things that that still need to happen. Uh, but I think it's it's going to be all eyes on Germany in terms of, uh, you know, what they decide to do next. Of course, this is a new government. It's a coalition government. Um, and they put out their manifesto for, in the front and center of which is legalization uh, of, of cannabis for non-medical purposes. And Germany is a sizable market. So uh, Materia and, and of course, we're looking at it. But uh, I think the world's eyes are really on, on what's going to happen in Germany and what Germany is actually going to do. Yeah, it's um, 
it's been interesting, right, to see a, such a shift from early on with Canadian legalization, and now we're talking about, you know, an entirely adi additional continent that seems to really be pulling together what is going to be an enormous trade zone as these borders start to come down. I know I've had conversations with folks in Australia, you know, sub-Saharan Africa, the, the, and even in South America, right, which typically would look north, but since a large portion of the North American continent's still not playing, um, you know, it, it really does put all eyes on um, Germany and the surrounding countries. You know, it, when you're looking at Materia and how you want to roll out expanded product distribution and stuff, um, Germany's a pretty tight market, I think. There's lots of competition. Um, does it, what's the business strategy to either differentiate or um, sort of maybe hit other countries while coming into Germany? Um, what's your approach going to be as much as you might be willing to talk about it? <laughs> yeah, no, of course. Uh, so, you know, uh, right from the get go, we've been, you know, laser focused on what we're, what we're good at and what we're going to do and what we're not going to do. And I think we learned the collective us, the industry, learned a number of lessons from, from North America, particularly Canada, around cultivation. We at Materia did a lot of soul, soul searching and, and, and basically ended up in the conclusion that we're not cultivators at our core. Uh, cultivation was not going to be a central tenant of our business, uh, whereas manufacturing and distribution were going to be central tenants. Um, I think that the way that the global landscape has evolved, whether it be Colombia, whether it be Portugal, whether it be Canada, we've seen plenty of facilities growing tons of cannabis uh, and, and they do it well. A number of them are very specialized in what they do. Uh, but there isn't a lot of manufacturing. There isn't a lot of distribution. There are different hoops and bottlenecks like EU GMP that you have to go through before you can actually launch a product on. And so we looked at some of the white space, uh, which still remains white space, uh, around where uh, people aren't playing and you know what is the opportunities that we can uh, take you know sort of leverage and so for us our strategy is very much uh you know operationalizing malt as we've as we've done in december uh you know we we put the first product out um it's just expanding that that pipeline that supply chain we, we truly want the global supply chain to come online so uh you know we're very excited about bringing additional products on from various parts of the country whether it be uh, sorry the globe uh, whether it be you know, Africa, whether it be uh, Latin America, whether it be Portugal and, and including Canada. So we want to really start to turn uh, sort of, you know, those different supply chains on. And I think that, uh, you know, Europe, uh, particularly Germany, is still going to be a sizable market, still very much an import market. Uh, but, but what's not lost in us is other European countries. So whether it be France that has now got a medical program already in place, whether it be Italy that is hosting a referendum soon and has, a, you know, a medical program as well, second largest in Europe, uh, we're definitely getting prepared for for, for those markets and you know what we've done over the last you know two years really is set a base and a foundation and that is you know getting our UGMP certification making sure the products that we bring in are of quality and are of good sort of you know uh, uh, pedigree and, and, and making sure that the products that we put out in the market are what patients want and uh, you know just trying to be able to service uh, patients with different products so I'd say from from our perspective our business strategy is to continue and focus on Germany. Germany is larger than the sum of every other market in, in, in Europe. Uh, but look at the UK, look at France, look at Poland, look at uh, Italy on, on servicing that market. The beauty of our model is we've got the EU GMP certification, which is a minimum standard that you'll need to be able to service all of these different different uh, markets within Europe. Yeah, um, you know, I've got a another sort of speculative question on on GMP standards around the world as things grow. It's something that I've talked to uh, even U.S. based manufacturers as they're, you know, really focused on whatever their individual state is about the future. I think because of these market restrictions placed by governments, in this case, the U.S., where there might have been sort of a battle for whose GMP sort of wins the world, I guess. Um, it really looks like that it's being set up now that EU GMP is going to be essentially not only the standard, but the expectation for every market that opens up uh, globally if they expect to compete. What, is, what do you think? Yeah, look, I mean, you know, EU GMP certainly is uh, in cannabis, at least so far, the gold standard around around quality and around safety. And so I think that I think where there's a bit of a disconnect between North America and Europe is that North America has, you know, done a fairly good job calling 
cannabis medicine, but has done a really poor job regulating it as such. Uh, and what I mean by that is whether it be Canada, whether it be the US, even post full legalization in Canada, we still can't get access to medical cannabis through pharmacies. It's really unfortunate for patients that are truly treating this as medicine that truly want to be able to get advice from a pharmacist around their different conditions, but they're not able to get that. It's illegal in Canada to be able to even speak to a bud tender about your uh, medical conditions, and it's illegal for them to give you advice on that. So what does a medical cannabis patient that is actually truly interested in the various different pharmaceutical applications, they're concerned about other medications that they might be on, what is that person supposed to do? Same, same thing in the US, despite legalization in a variety of states, you can't go into CVS or Walgreens uh, and or Target and be able to access your medical cannabis with all the other pharmaceuticals. You can't speak to a pharmacist about your different conditions. So I think that's where the disconnect emulates from. Whereas in Europe, you know, whether it be Malta, whether it be Germany, whether it be Denmark, whether it be the UK, uh, you know, you can actually walk into a pharmacy and you can actually speak to a pharmacist that is dispensing your other medications about medical cannabis. And I think that is, you know, sort of where the disconnect arises. And I think what Europe has said is, look, we're not going to stop you from launching what's essentially an unlicensed medicine, but we're going to let make sure that you get GMP and which is the which is the base to be able to launch your product in. But we're not going to stop you and make you go through clinical trials and you know conduct all this research as traditional pharmaceuticals are going to. And and so I think it's been a very pragmatic approach from a pharmaceutical perspective for Europe to have structured it the way they have. And you know you're right. I, you know I don't necessarily think that the globe is going to require EU GMP certification for products. I, I don't think North America is going to require that anytime soon, but certainly new markets that are coming online would be wise to make sure that the quality level is high. I think one of the challenges we saw in, in Canada and we, we saw in Europe as well, even post GMP, was that quality was, you know, continuing to be an issue. There was mold, there was, uh, you know, a variety of different uh, issues around product safety that were, that arose simply because, uh, you know, a lot of these conditions weren't in place. Um, as far as GMP is concerned, you know, the United States Food and Drug Administration or Health Canada is very competent to be able to uh, certify companies for GMP. They just haven't had that willingness. If you look at the pharmaceutical industry, a pharmaceutical product that's manufactured in the United States or manufactured in Canada is at the same level from a GMP perspective to be able to, you know, to, to be able to sell products into Germany. So it's not that our regulatory authorities don't have the knowledge or the experience. They just haven't required the cannabis industry to be able to comply to that level. And so that's why you're seeing EU GMP be the gold standard. And I think looking beyond North America and Europe, I think you're now starting to see Thailand have very serious conversations around medical cannabis. You're starting to see Malaysia uh, and, and even some of the you know Middle Eastern countries look very seriously at medical cannabis. And so I think they would certainly require EU GMP. So I think this is, you know, sort of, we've always said that cannabis legalization is a process, it's not an event. And you're seeing that process sort of, you know, make its different waves across different continents. And I think a lot of them are adopting sort of and adapting all of the good and the that, that, that has happened in North America and are, are creating their own versions of legalization. So I think medical cannabis, certainly GMP is probably something that, that makes its way over beyond European shores as we move east uh, towards uh, sort of, you know, some of the Asian countries. Uh, and, and same thing on the policy side. I think you're going to start to see that policy evolve as you're seeing in Malta now. You know, ESG was never a conversation in Canada. You know, unfortunately in this country, there's still uh, people that are incarcerated for cannabis that haven't gotten amnesty, haven't sort of, you know, been involved in the industry, but now Europe's picking that up and it's starting to have that conversation. And I think Asia will have a, an even better conversation. I think that's the beauty of it is that, uh, you know, th this is very much a process and we're seeing this process unfold. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it, you, um, at the beginning, you were talking about sort of where, where you were at in 2019 and what the, the future held, uh, looking forward to where we are now. You seem to have done a pretty good job of predicting the future uh, over the last couple of years in terms of where, um, you know, you've clearly been making moves uh, business-wise and then having the market sort of fill in those gaps as you're moving forward. Um, so I, you know, as in wrapping up the conversation, I think it would behoove us all to ask you, you know, what you see really coming in because you we we talked about asia things moving in europe like over the next 12 months 18 months where are you really seeing 
the likely uh, upward curves or challenges. I mean, I, I know we've got a lot of challenges ahead of us still in this industry as well. So what does that look like for you um, with Materia in particular? Yeah, look, I mean, Materia is, you know, we're going to be laser focused on in our own backyard, which effectively is Europe. There's a lot still that is going to happen in the continent. Uh, I, I don't think anyone has a has a crystal ball. And, you know, I really wish sometimes we all did uh, because there's Me just too. so many unknowns and, and so many curveballs. But having said that, within our own backyard, there's still so much to evolve. France hasn't come online in a meaningful way. Italy hasn't come online in a meaningful way. Uh, you know, there's a variety of other European countries that still haven't really come online. The UK hasn't come online in a meaningful way. Uh, so if you look at those three countries in itself, you know, it's a sizable population base and, uh, and a very big market for medical cannabis. So we're going to be focused very much on, uh, on the immediate sort of, you know, backyard, if you will, uh, which is Europe. Uh, recreational cannabis is certainly, you know, something that we're keeping our eyes on and it's always of interest, uh, particularly as Malta and literally in our backyard has now gone forward with. So, uh, you know, that's something we're certainly looking at. But uh, even other countries that come online, you know, Israel out of nowhere has become the largest importer of medical cannabis overnight, pretty much. Uh, I think if you had asked me, you know, two years ago, if, if that would happen, the answer probably would have been no. Uh, and so I think that's where some of us have been wrong. And so, you know, I, I think the one thing that we can probably agree on is that there will be new markets come online and, and they will be, you know, could be unsuspecting markets that come online almost overnight. Um, and, and there might be other markets that, like Luxembourg, have maybe made some big announcements that might retrench a bit, right? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, we've seen in cannabis, it's often, you know, two steps forward, 10 steps back. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's very much uh, a game of politics. And I think, you know, uh, as often is said in the industry, if cannabis is your business, politics, you know, effectively also needs to be uh, something that you're watching very closely. And so, uh, you know, I think the, these are very politically driven uh, decisions sometimes. Things could change overnight. And, uh, you know, we're going to keep our eye on it. I think for us, it's very much laser focused on our immediate backyard and, and what, what develops in Europe, particularly on the medical cannabis side. And, uh, you know, we'll continue to evolve our business as we see additional opportunities. Coming. Great. Well, Deepak, I want to thank you again for, for coming on. Um, I like these annual at least and often more frequent sort of updates on what you're up to and what's happening around the world. Um, I always learn something when I'm talking to you, so I appreciate it tremendously. And uh, to all of you out there in podcast land listening, if you haven't subscribed to the International Cannabis Conversation, please do hit that little button and subscribe. Listen to us um, as we tour the world of global cannabis markets. Again, thanks, everybody, for listening in. And Deepak, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me.